And we are one minute out. Laurel, we're going to start on time. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? WCAI, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Patrick Flannery with WCAI. How do you hear me? Hi, Patrick. I have you loud and clear, and welcome aboard the International Space Station. Laurel, this is a first for me. I've never spoken to anyone in space. Would you give us a sense of what you're looking at right now? What can you see in front of you? Uh, well, right now I'm in the Japanese module on space station. Um, there's a lot of science that happens in here. I've got the life sciences glove box that we do a lot of our um, biology experiments in. There's a lot of cables all the way down the wall, um, just a lot of equipment. <laughs> You're floating. I have to get this in my mind that I am speaking to you and you're in space. What does it sound like, by the way, on the International Space Station? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's always, it's actually pretty noisy on board Space Station. Um, there's really no quiet part. Um, and it's just the constant background hum of machines. Uh, there's fans running, there's pumps running, computers. Um, so you just have this machine noise everywhere you go. We do have noise-canceling headphones, so if you need a little bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> well, for you, does solitude mean what it used to mean before you left this planet? Do you get any solitude? Yeah, you know, for um, for having seven people on board, um, there's all it's it's all you can always kind of find a place to tuck away if you want a little bit of solitude. And then we also each have an individual. Uh, what, what's called our crew quarters. It's like a phone booth sized space with a door that we can close and that's where we sleep and you know kind of have some quiet time. But actually one of my favorite places um, for solitude is right back here. Uh, these are two windows and so I like to tuck in there to read or write in my journal. Laurel is pointing to two very small, very, these are tight quarters is all I can say. Uh, well, does the crew eat its meals together at least? Yeah, we do. Um, we have dinner together most nights. Um, and then also sometimes we get together with the whole crew, the cosmonauts as well, um, and have shared dinners. Like on this past Saturday, my NASA crew, crewmate Jasmine brought Persian food uh, for us to sample that is one of her family's favorite dishes. And so we all got together and shared the Persian food and then also shared some ice cream that was courtesy of our latest cargo vehicle. You've been posting these spectacular photos on Instagram. It's clear we take gravity for granted here on Earth. My favorite of yours is the one where you're giving yourself a haircut, your hair is floating, you're using a vacuum to collect the hair. What other day-to-day -day routines have forced you to get creative? Um, you know, pretty much everything. You have to get a little bit creative. Um, everything's different in microgravity. And so things that you take for granted, you know, you set like on earth, uh, actually um, we were laughing just recently cause we were talking about like, oh, it's gonna be nice once we get back to earth and you set something down, it actually stays where you put it. Um, cause that never happens up here. Things float off really quickly. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this part of your research, Laurel, aboard the space station focus on how much or how time in space affects the body. And what else are you studying? 
Yeah, well, one of the major experiments that I'm personally a part of is an experiment called Cypher. Um, it's a large research study that encompasses a bunch of um, individual studies on the psychological and physiological aspects of long duration space flight. So everything from how my brain um, adapts to the 3D environment and just adapts to the space flight environment to the effects on muscles and bone and cardiovascular health and all of those various things. Um, it's looking at multiple astronauts over multiple uh, mission durations. Um, with the goal of you know learning how the space environment affects the human body as we start to go back to the moon and eventually onto Mars. Um, and then as far as other research goes, um, it's awesome up here because we get to do a little bit of everything. And so in one day I might be working on a combustion experiment, a material science experiment while someone else is working on some of our life sciences experiments. So there's always um, a lot of different work going on. Quickly, does anything blow you away anymore now that you've been in space? Or does everything just seem rather, eh? Uh, absolutely not. I still have pretty much every day a moment where um, I just float something in front of me and I stop and I'm like, this this is just floating here. This is so cool. Or I'm floating through a module and, you know, I get a little spin going and it's just so fun. Um, and then definitely every day, uh, I always have a moment looking out cupola, um, looking out our windows at Earth and just seeing something just create insanely beautiful um, that I haven't seen before or that I've seen many times and I just love to see it. Uh, every time and so yeah there's there's moments every day where I can't believe I'm in space and I'm just in awe. Students at the West Tisbury School on Martha's Vineyard have a couple of questions for you. Here they are back to back. Hi my name is Tatum. I was wondering what the orbit of space looks like. Hi my name is Rihanna. I was wondering how long will you be in space? both great questions. Um, our orbits are n about 90 minutes. So every 90 minutes we do a full revolution of the Earth. And um, that means we see lots of sunrises and sunsets every day, about 16, uh, which is pretty neat. And we also fly, or we fly over different, about 75% of the Earth um, on one orbit. And we fly over the same point on Earth about every three days. So we see a lot of different things every day. Um, I've been on space station for about five months now. Um, I launched in September and I will be returning to Earth on April 2nd. I know you've worked with Russia or in, I know you've worked in Russia in the past. Are you and the crew working with the Russian cosmonauts now and what's the relationship like? Yeah, um, I spent a lot of time in Russia leading up to launch um, just uh, there for training, of course. Um, on Space Station, we don't do a lot of work on a day-to-day -day basis together. Uh, we have a super international crew. Uh, so we have Russia, the United States, Denmark, and Japan all represented on board Space Station right now. And we tend to focus on our country's experiments, which makes sense. So the, the cosmonauts are mostly working in the Russian segment on Russian experiments. Uh, Jasmine and I work on a lot of the NASA experiments. Andy is, spends a lot of time in Columbus, and Satoshi spends a lot of time in Jim, where I am right now. Um, but I had a great time um, working with the Russian cosmonauts and the Russian instructors uh, leading up to launch. And my crew, uh, my Soyuz crew, is very professional. They were very experienced and great operators, and we worked really well in Soyuz together. There's news that the space station will be replaced by the end of the decade. Are you keen to get back to the space station before that happens? I would love to come back here. Uh, I Our mission, it's hard to believe that our mission is coming to a close and I still feel like there's so many things to do and see on board, so I'd be delighted to come back. Are you sleeping well? And by the way, Laurel, have you ever woken up and forgotten you're in space and just had one of those moments of, oh, right, I'm in outer space? Yeah, I sleep, I sleep pretty well up here, uh, no complaints at all. But it was funny, when I first got on board, I would wake up in the middle of the night, and I don't know if I had just kind of floated out of my sleeping bag a little bit, uh, but I'd wake up kind of like feeling, feeling my way around, like not really sure where I was. Um, that doesn't happen as much now, but uh, that was pretty interesting. 
Um, and then also, like, I still have yeah. The another thing that I found funny is that just dreaming on board. I still all my dreams have still take place on Earth. I haven't started actually like dreaming in space yet. Oh wow. That is astronaut Laurel O'Hara, who right now is in space. She and the Expedition 70 crew are conducting research at the International Space Station. Laurel, safe travels to you. We cannot wait to have you back here on Earth. Thanks so much. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.